Hi everybody, this is Mr. K. I am the senior evening instructor here for Marinello San Diego campus. Today's lesson was all about introduction to makeup artistry and a basic makeup application. I like to have an interactive theory where I'm delivering the information and at the same time coaching my students um, through each step so they're absorbing the information right away two different ways. So I Hey guys! Happy today! Well, I'm really excited and I hope you guys are too. Today's lesson is all about facial makeup. Thank you. Christy? Um, I have like a lot of trouble doing people's eye makeup, like from different shapes and stuff. I'm so glad you said that, Christy. That is a pretty big challenge. It's actually one of the first things I'm going to talk about in my lesson today. One of the biggest challenges that I've come across from a lot of my students when first learning how to do makeup is how to do eyeshadow, how to do eye makeup. A lot of times people don't know where to start, they don't know like what shapes to create or how to blend and you know all kinds of different issues. And just like Christy, it's a pretty common problem, but it's an easy fix if you just kind of look at it differently. A lot of times people just kind of, they just, they just look at a picture and they don't really know how to break it down or analyze it. They're just looking at a nice pretty picture and they don't know where to start, they don't know how to navigate through it. So, I like to break it down really easy and it kind of makes it like a paint by number and with that technique you can find pretty much any picture or magazine ad of a cool makeup look especially with the eyes and you'll be able to break it down and learn how to translate it onto somebody else. We have the eye structure. We first start off with the area right underneath the brow. This is what we, this is what we call the brow bone or the highlight or the brow highlight. This area right here is what we use to kind of define the eyebrow shape, to add light to the face, to open up the whole eye structure. The next part of the structure that we apply makeup to, I'm saying these in order, is gonna be the lid. The lid, um, the eyelid, the flap of skin that opens and closes when you blink, this is where you can pretty much showcase any color, any color, any texture, whatever. This kind of, this is, a, this is an area that allows you to experiment and just be as creative as you want to be. The third step is applying the crease. The crease actually isn't like a physical like thing that's always there. It's actually only there when your eyes open. It's a fold that's created um, when your lid is open and it casts a shadow. So it's a fold and a shadow essentially. So normally in the crease area for most everyday looks, for most looks in general, we want to use something that's a little bit more on the matte texture and usually for a basic eye makeup application will be the darkest out of the three. The other components of the eye structure are the upper lash line, the lower lash line, the inner corner, and the outer corner. Let's look at it and go, okay, what color did they use in her brow highlight? And what texture of eyeshadow is it? What color is on her lid? What color is in her crease? How did they... Um, how did they emphasize the upper lash line? Did they do anything to the lower lash line? Is the inner corner highlighted? And did they add more dimension in the outer corner? All you gotta do is just break it down into those steps and you can pretty much with practice create almost any makeup look that you see. Because every makeup look falls into the structure because everybody has, for the most part, the same eye structure. I like to do the eye makeup first in general when I do a total makeup application because I'm going to get some fallout on the cheek regardless, so it's better to kind of make a little bit of a mess while doing the eye makeup, clean it up, and then you can start doing the rest of the face. Plus, most of the time the eye makeup takes the longest, so once you get that out of the way, everything's boom, boom, boom. Um, before we head over to the media center to talk about the sanitation and safety precautions, um, make sure you guys take down the assignment preview and copy down the keywords. I'm going to start with eyeshadow primer. Pretty much every major makeup line has their own eyeshadow primer. Eyeshadow primer is awesome for helping colors come out true from the way that you see them in your palette. Um, it also helps blending, helps you blend better, and it helps the eyeshadow wear longer so it's more durable when it comes to moisture, sweat, oil, etc. and it prevents it from creasing or separating. So I'm just going to apply 
some eyeshadow primer on the eye area. A little goes a long way, so be sparing. We can go ahead and clean up. Go ahead and look up. I like to wrap a makeup wipe around my finger so I can gently remove any fallout from the previous eyeshadow and to clean up my eyeshadow shape. Now it's time to do her foundation or face makeup. Um, I normally like working on a model or client that has their skin clean and moisturized at the beginning because then it makes everything else go on better, go on easier and blend nicely. So with any liquid or cream foundation or face product, you just want just the right amount. So I'm going to apply nine dots in the key areas, across the forehead, across the middle of the face, and across um, the bottom. You can blend it with a sponge or the same makeup brush. I like to use a stippling brush. Stippling brush looks like this and does the work of three brushes at the same time. So we get a more airbrushed effect to the face. I've dispensed out some of my lipstick onto my palette and I'm using a disposable lipstick brush to fill in the lips with her lipstick color. Making sure that I blend the lip liner so that we don't get too hard or severe of a look. Go ahead and press. And our look is complete. Um, thank you very much for watching what I do. I love makeup artistry and I love being a teacher here, so I hope my passion translated through. Thank you.